Hello beautiful people, I think it is time I do an update on my reading journal which is housed in this very very handsome Rotterfaden cover. Last time I did a video on my reading notes, uh, it was probably a year ago, and I was not even halfway through this first insert. As I am about to wrap up this particular notebook, I thought it was a good time to talk about my system and how I organize my reading notes. Okay, so how does this work? Um, first of all, and I have this as an example, I read my book, I enjoy my book, I have fun with it, I go everywhere with my book to read in my spare time, and as I read my book, I underline everything that I find interesting or important, I add <laughs> colored stickers, I write in the margins, so I do underline all of my books, every single one. Once I finish my book, I let it rest, I come to this little notebook and I write my first impressions on the book, why I liked it, why I didn't like it, all of that. Um, sometimes after a month or some weeks, I come back to my book and I go through every single page looking for the things that I underlined or highlighted. Where are they? So yeah, I go through every single page and I read only the parts that I highlighted. I don't read everything again. And I decide if this is something that I may want to reference or study or analyze more in depth. Some things are just interesting to have in here and I like that I highlighted or underlined it. Um, but that doesn't mean that I will want to write it down. So go, I go through everything and I'm like, oh yeah, this is very, very interesting. So this I would, I do want to write it down. And like I mentioned, it does take time because um, even though I only go through the things I underlined, I mean, I'm basically going through the book, the whole book uh, a second time. And not only like going through everything I underlined, I write down many of the things, not all of it. I guess out of everything I underlined, I take notes on maybe 30% of the things I highlight. And as I write everything down, I add my personal notes. Some of the notes are from at the moment as I write things down, or some of the notes are what I had here in the margins. So, um, for example, here I have things in the margins, so when I wrote this paragraph, I added these little notes. Like, here I'm writing 1984 because this uh, reminded me of 1984 by George Orwell. I finished my notes. And once I finish my notes, I go through all of my notes, so I guess that counts as a third reading. Remember, I do this with subjects, books, and themes that I want to understand better. Um, now you're understanding why I don't do this with every single book. That would be ridiculous. Um, so yeah, that counts as a third reading, because I really want to understand this subject. Um, and I, as I go through everything I wrote, I underline the things that really, like, I, I want to pop out. And I didn't mention, as I'm writing down everything I underlined, I also uh, write down with a different font and in a box the quotes that I found super, super interesting. That I want them to pop out, kind of like in a magazine. But anyway, in that third reading, I go through everything and I add my dot stickers. And I underline, highlight again, uh, add more notes. This way I can, I can say that I can, I, I really understood, the, I understood this book and I can relate it to some other books that I read and I can remember everything I read because I thought it, this, it was interesting to remember it. So this is the whole point of this. And so what, what, what's the meaning of these dots? So everything in blue, 
Uh, these are things that, even though it's history, because this book talks about historical events that actually happened, I'm working with blue the things that sound like dystopia. I do write, like to write short stories and um, for example Margaret Atwood mentions that everything she includes in her books were based on events that actually happened, you know, real events. So these are things that I, I have dystopia and world building on purple. So blue and purple are, are things that could um, help serve as inspiration for world building of a particular short story that I'm writing or could write or may want to write. So, um, for example, last night I was writing a little short story, um, kind of a dystopia short story, and I was going through everything I have in, with a blue dot, you know, to find inspiration that could serve as description or to inspire this world that I was creating. So that's the purpose of, of the blue and the purple dot. It is everything that could um, serve as inspiration to describe a particular world that I am kind of uh, inventing for a short story. Uh, everything with pink are key concepts. Key concepts within this subject, you know, um, oligarchy, the rule of law, strategic, strategic relativ relativism, um, you know, concepts that may be important to remember because uh, they could be recurring concepts or themes or terms in other political science books or essays or, you know, fiction books. There, at the end of the day, there are terms or concepts that I will want to remember and be, I do like being able to find them quickly. Everything with a yellow dot is something that I think is important to remember. And everything with uh, green, uh, they're just personal thoughts, reflections, ideas. And each reading or each, you know, pass through my notes, they don't happen one immediately after the other. For example, I don't have many dots for On Truth by George Orwell because I just finished the notes, I think it was on December, and right now I have been kind of going back and bringing it little by little, just a couple pages per day, and I'm like, oh yeah, I would like to add this thought and I don't have this one in my key but the orange dot is to thread my pages. For example here I am marking that this particular quote or paragraph is related to what I have in page 34 and 35. Here, so I'm marking them in here too. And as I continue reading books on these particular subjects, I do come back to my notes to thread more ideas that could unite uh, the topics in different books or the ideas in different books because that helps memory. Um, yeah, well, that that's this first one. So in here I have Road to on Freedom, 1984. On Truth, so good, so so good. If you want like a quick summary of everything by George Orwell, On Truth is the best starting point. And if you love George Orwell, uh, this is a must read because you can see so, through this collection of essays and texts the ideas that gave place to Animal Farm and 1984. Then I have Animal Farm. Here in the green tab, I have biographical information. You know who was George Orwell. Uh, his real name is, his real name was Eric Arthur Blair. Um, 
where was he from, some of some main life events, and you know, this kind of information helps you understand, um, you know, an author's sources of inspiration and, you know, their life work. We have high information on Timothy Schneider. And the blue tab is going to be for, um, I guess, reference. All of those words that I marked, or terms that I marked with that pink uh, sticker dot. Um, I want to collect all of those key terms and words and concepts here in the bag so that I can find them easily in case I read another book where I find a similar term and I want to, you know, when I'm done with this, I can find them easily through a, I guess it's going to be an index, if you will, you know, the concept, definition according to these authors and the page where I have some notes regarding that particular term or concept. Um, so that's this first notebook. Um, so for these other notebooks, my notes are kind of different because this is a subject that I want to understand better. Over here I have notebooks that I just know I want to reference. So my reading notes are things that I know for sure I will want to reference in the future. Uh, things I want to gain a deeper understanding of. And I guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, yeah, for example, in here I have Atomic Habits. I strongly recommend this book if you're into productivity and, you know, make things happen in your life. So the whole concept of this book is starting small. And if you have seen any of my videos on time blocking, um, I talk about doing something small, uh, very small steps towards your goal. Um, so th uh, that I took it from Atomic Habits. So because I have a stationary channel where I also talk about planning, about productivity, these notes I do reference them throughout uh, my videos and this video, this book particular, ha particularly has influenced a lot my planning style and the way I approach my tasks and my everyday to-dos. So I, I highly, highly recommend Atomic Habits. And you, as you can see throughout these notes, I only have the column for the page number because this is not a book that, you know, I need to <laughs> analyze too much. Um, I just le left space for the exercises but I just have the parts that I found interesting and the page number. Same with the one over here, which is the bullet journal method. Again, because I have a planning channel, I work with the bullet journal. Um, I think the bullet journal method by writer Carol has influenced most of us in the planning community. Um, so yeah, be because of my channel, I do reference some of the information in here. So the color coding I have in here also has to do with key terms and concepts that I want to remember so that I can, in case I want to mention them in my channel, for example, this paragraph is on the power of journaling. So these notes are basically, uh, they're telling me very briefly what this is this about. So for example, if I'm making a video on the power of journaling, I know here I have it marked the power of journaling and then I have this quote that I could reference in a video. Everything in green are tips for planning and for productivity. And that's pretty much it. I take my time with these. I try to enjoy the process. So this doesn't feel like a chore or like a task. Um, this is something I do because I want to and because I like doing this. And that's why I take my time and I make sure I enjoy this whole process. And yeah, like for example, out of 10 books I read in 2021, only two are in here. And for 2022, 
I read eight books and I think only one of them is in here. And I'm still debating uh, which one is going to be next. I'm thinking it may be writing down the bones. Highly recommended uh, for those of you who want to write as a hobby or just to practice creative writing or because you want to write a book, a novel, anything. I highly recommend this book, Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg. Um, it has some very useful tips and recommendations and you know, I, I like that it's very uh, straightforward to the point. So still deciding, I will keep updating you on how my reading journal is growing and evolving. Now, what do I do with, with those books that I read? For example, fiction, um, YA, sci-fi, that I jo enjoy, that I love, that have some very cool quotes, but I, I mean, I don't feel like they belong in a system where I have things that I want to analyze and study and maybe use for um, reference as part of my channel. Like I mentioned, all my books I highlight and underline and I just keep them like, I I tab them. I tab all my favorite parts. This is, by the way, <laughs> if not my favorite novel ever, it's on my top five favorite novels. Um, I love this writer, he's a Mexican writer, Carlos Fuentes. And to me this book, oh, chef's kiss, love everything, everything about this book. Like you can see it's super old. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's very very old. I have read this little book like five times and this one I know it by heart. <laughs> That's why I don't need to write down everything, anything because when I want to remember my favorite quotes and parts I just know where they are and I can find them easily with my little flags, these green flags and you know the, the underlined parts. And oof, I love this book so, so much. I think this is the one of the few that I know by heart. Um, but yeah, this is what I do with those books that don't necessarily belong here. But yeah, I, I do go back to the books I enjoy. And I love being able to find easily my favorite quotes and my favorite paragraphs. And this is one of them. And for those quotes, because, you know, there are sometimes quotes that I really, really feel like write, writing them down. Um, all my commonplace books have quotes uh, from whatever book I'm currently reading. Okay, so for example, this is my second to last uh, commonplace book. And this is from a book I'm still reading, uh, another book similar to this one about creative process and creative writing and the act of writing and the book is what it is uh, and I have the page number, page 48 and I have some of the quotes that I found more interesting. So for example this common place book, this one is from 2019 and here I have all of my notes from 1984. Actually what I have in here from 1984 are my notes from here and the thing is when I was reading some other dystopias I wanted to compare some uh, paragraphs or remember some of the things from this book and I just kept pulling this book and looking for those quotes and you know the books that the notebooks I finished I like to put them in a box and I had to keep this out because I was looking for some quotes and some paragraphs and I was like maybe I should uh, come up with a better system to cross-reference what I'm reading so that's how I decided to do this. Uh, because yeah, all my commonplace books were filled with quotes and paragraphs from what I was currently reading. For example, somewhere over here I also have Sapiens by uh, Yuval Noah Harari. Here is Sapiens. Sapiens. So, oh no, not this. So they're all over the place. That's why I decided it was time to Put some order in here. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. Um, more Sapiens. Yes. Uh, sapiens notes. So all of these in blue. Wow, this pen was horrible. 
Yeah, all of this is from Sapiens. So they were kind of scattered all over my commonplace book. Um, so once I finished this particular notebook, I decided to um, work with a better note-taking system to be able to cross-reference my notes. And I wish I had done this before. I mean, I was able to, I did transfer these notes, uh, 1984 notes into here because it was related to what the books I was uh, reading at the time. But for example, the notes I have for Sapiens, there's so many, I don't feel like rewriting them. So I've been thinking if I should just um, pull out the pages from here. Um, because I do want to read the other two books from this particular author. The second one is Homo Deus, I think. There's another one, um, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. So I want to read more from this author. And I want to also be able to cross-reference um, his different books. So <laughs> I'm actually dreading having to rewrite all of this. I mean, I guess I just uh, sit down some Sunday afternoon and get it done because the final, the final outcome is the part that I truly enjoy. Like being able to have a deeper understanding of a particular author and go back to my notes and, you know, um, navigate my notes easily and find what I want to find. That's priceless. So that's uh, how this came to be. <laughs> and I'm sorry if this video was all over the place. I tried to explain my system as best as I can, but uh, please, if you have questions, ideas, recommendations, um, uh, just let me know in the comment section. I always read the comments and I always try to respond as quick as I can. So I'll see you in the next one.